Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, checking in. July 30th, 2020, straight up 8 p.m. out here on the West Coast here in California with the latest earthquake here on the globe. Earthquake 3D globe showing a 4.8 just southwest of Japan out here. Um, that's kind of somewhat close to that 4.7 and a couple other larger quakes there in the region um, over the last 24 hours or so. Activity, activity definitely picking up. It seems as though worldwide at the moment here looking pretty much above average uh, for earthquake activity on any given 24-hour uh, period here. So definitely something to watch. Um, looking at the earthquake activity in Southern Cal, just going to cover that real quick. They did have that 4.2 earthquake this morning. Uh, kind of shook people up there uh, north of Los Angeles. And uh, the largest aftershock so far has been a 3.8. That struck, uh, looks like... Just a couple hours following that main shaker. Uh, 4.2, not a big quake, folks, but there's definitely quite a bit of aftershocks uh, following that region or following that earthquake there. Only seven total, but that's only 2.5 and above. If we go ahead and include the all magnitude quakes here, we can take a look at the uh, uh, bigger picture here. It looks like about 81 earthquakes or so within the, the vicinity. And once again, this is San Fernando region here and it's in this neighborhood there underneath this neighborhood by about uh while well, looking at the depths here they they seem right around 10 kilometers or so uh the main shaker was let's see what do we got here about 8.9 kilometers below the surface so a lot of activity uh happening within this region not on the san andreas fault system folks i know a lot of people w was asking about that but that's not the case it's kind of on a thrust fault here um, north of, uh, let's see here, let's see, name of that fault system here. Where did they go? Oh, okay, they're all covered up. They're just completely covered up, the fault system is. But it's this one right here. It's the Sierra Madre, uh, let's see if I can get that to pop up. Sometimes these are tricky. Sierra Madre Fault Zone, San Fernando section here. Uh, it's kind of like a thrust area. So that's kind of why a lot of folks reported feeling this as a rolling or uh, you know, like a like a falling type earthquake, you know, kind of like the ground is, uh, you know, that feeling you get kind of when you're going up or falling down. I'm sure it wasn't super dramatic, but uh, you know, a lot of folks were feeling uh, uh, something other than the normal jolting side to side action that uh, tends to happen a lot in Southern California. So it's a pretty good sized cluster of quakes there, folks. There's something I didn't cover on my previous update video here is the earthquake forecast okay a lot of folks look for an earthquake forecast okay and there's i'm not going to mention any names but there's quite a few folks out there that love to fear monger and love to throw out um fake forecasting which never comes true uh, these folks here at the usgs they uh they put into percentages here uh the potentials for a, a larger earthquake or similar size magnitude quake they don't you know they're not they're not basic they're not really predicting but more or less like a forecasting percentage is what it's all about here from the folks at the usgs um be ready for more earthquakes more earthquakes than usual called aftershocks will continue to occur near the main shock and this is just a little 4.2 right popping off all these little um aftershocks pretty crazy uh, according to their forecast, over the next week, there is a 6% chance of one or more aftershocks that are larger than a magnitude 4.2. So that's larger than the main main quake right there. It is likely that there will be a there will be smaller earthquakes over the next week uh, with with zero to four magnitude three or higher aftershocks. Uh, magnitude three and above are large enough to be felt near the epicenter. Uh, of course, the number of aftershocks will drop off over time, folks. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely a <clears throat> potential, it looks like, a 6% chance of one or more aftershocks that are larger than magnitude 4.2. Not a big potential, but nonetheless, uh, the potential is there. There's some of the uh, uh, the percentages, right, the, the probabilities, if you will. I'm not going to read all these, but they are up on the USGS main page here. When you click on any good uh, any earthquake, 
Um, I don't know if it's on any earthquake, but it's on notable earthquakes that draw a lot of attention. And once again, these are not predictions. These are not saying that there's a prediction uh, of a larger quake coming, but the, um, you know, a possibility, probability percentage-wise. So, you know, just take that with a grain of salt, folks. You know, no, nobody can predict earthquakes at all. Um, but, you know, the uh, forecasting is there. Let's see what they said. Even USGS said something down here. All right, here, here we go. Ready, folks? Ready for this? It's going to be hard for some people to accept. No one can predict the exact time or place of any earthquake, including aftershocks. Uh, what our earthquake forecasts do is give us an understanding of the chances of having more earthquakes within a given time period. Uh, they calculate this earthquake forecast using a uh, statistical analysis based on past earthquakes and the aftershocks recorded for the sequence. So yeah, just figured I would throw that in there, folks. I know I've, I've just seen it all over Facebook. I'm not going to mention names. There's a couple of them, not just one individual, but a couple that are trying to fear monger people, saying there's a 95% chance of a major earthquake in uh, northwest of Los Angeles within the next day. And it just goes and it changes. You know, they change your forecast all the time. Anyway. <clears throat> Blah, blah, blah. That's what I say to that. There's that 4.8. They're uh, 149 kilometers east of Nago, Japan. That's the latest earthquake on the map. You can see quite a bit of earthquake activity throughout the Indonesia Islands region, stretching out here through uh, Samoa and then downward a little bit here. This Tonga earthquake, almost a six pointer, 5.7 magnitude quake, striking out there in the uh, South Pacific region. So. And that's an older earthquake, that 4.1, I believe. That one's striking, uh, yeah, way earlier this morning. And then there was one out there in New Mexico, right? Yep, we did cover those. So, not, you know, not a whole lot going on out here, folks. It's just something to watch, you know. A lot of activity somewhat picking up out here on the West Coast. Um, Yellowstone looking pretty quiet and silent. Maybe a little bit of sporadic microquakes over here. See these little spikes here? Those are uh, just microquakes. Nothing big. No swarming going on yet. You know, even if it does happen, that's is typical of uh, Yellowstone National Park to start swarming. They can have swarms for a month, a couple months. I remember the big one uh, a few years ago. It lasted like all summer, four or five months long. It was pretty crazy. I don't know if it was five months long, but uh, it was it was gosh darn close there. One more time, checking out the trimmer map here for the latest real-time data. Activity uh, looks like it's calmed down off the coast of Vancouver. I know over the past couple days, past week or so, we've seen a, a pretty good swarm of uh, slippage up there in the Cascadia subduction zone south of Vancouver uh, Island ranges down here, right in this little area northwest of Seattle. Now, today, the most recent uh, swarming or uh, trimmer, if you will, is looks like the coast of Oregon and Washington right there. Also a little bit down into the valleys of Northern California. Uh, that activity is kind of interesting here because uh, that's where I live, way up here to the north. And that's Trimmer, which is being recorded way down below the surface there. But I have noticed a couple uh, surface quakes here. Looks like they have taken that. Well, they're still there, I guess, a little bit. A couple smaller surface quakes here within that region that I showed you um, near Hamilton City. The depth on these are kind of, like I said, surface quaking, 2.7 and 2.5, uh, 5 kilometers below the surface there, 3 miles. So, uh, you know, when we see some uh, subduction going on down there, some slippage, I guess we should expect some surface quaking as well. You know, just hopefully it's not a big one, but uh, it's not abnormal to see uh, some earthquakes out here just we just don't see them all the time so hopefully we don't see any more anyway um what else we got going on folks tropics kind of watching the tropics still i know florida's looking at uh potential of getting hit with possibly category one hurricane here in the uh what this weekend i believe or sometime towards the end of this weekend 
haven't really looked at the charts. It's not really impressive. Uh, but in a category one, I guess we'll do um, a little bit of damage and bring some wind and rain inside the area. But I heard though, Florida people don't really start freaking out until it's like a category four or five. So, you know, I've never been in one, but I do plan on being one, and uh, that's what I like to do. I'm a storm chaser professionally. I that's that's what I do. I got uh, you know a lot of years doing it. Never been in a hurricane, but I can't. Uh, I can't assume it's any worse than standing in a in a super strong straight line winds with uh, lightning all around me and and yeah. But uh, anyway, have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there.